So masking is a really cool way to create some great transitions or to save some shots that you may think are otherwise lost. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can mask in Final Cut Pro 10. Hey there, I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys, and if you're into Final Cut Pro 10 or video editing, consider subscribing to this channel because that's what we're all about. So masking is a really cool way of creating some really nice transitions within Final Cut Pro 10. You can also actually use it to save some shots. We've been filming out and about and we've had people walk in front of the camera and you kind of think, oh no, they've just ruined this perfect shot. But you can actually use that as part of the wipe, as part of the mask for the transition. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how that's done. So let's jump into Final Cut and I'll show you how you can make your own masking transitions. Okay, so we're gonna use these two clips we got here from our recent trip at the Amsterdam trade show. We've got this first clip here uh, that Lewis got of me walking through the trade show halls. And as you can see, we get a little shot of the where's the party at sign. And then we come past this guy's backpack and then we're on the road again. And what we wanna do is we want to basically transition from that guy's back to this nice shot here of this Netherlands lamppost. So what we wanna do is we're gonna just chop this clip down a little bit just to get rid of some of the excess. So uh, we go past the guy's back and around here, we're gonna chop it. So we're gonna get the B blade tool shortcut. We're just gonna chop that, go back to the A select tool, chop this clip here. And then we're just gonna drag this clip underneath. And we basically want to start the mask at the point where the backpack just basically starts to move. So. We're gonna get through to about, about there. And that's where we want this mask to start. So we've got the clip underneath and it's important that the clip is underneath um, the top clip because you wanna see that coming through underneath once the mask is complete. So what we wanna do, let's just get this ready here. And I'm just gonna fine tune this a little bit. Let's get this, let's get this ready here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little cut there just so this is a fresh clip that I know we're going to start the masking on. Now, what you want to do first of all is hit Command and 5 to bring up the effects panel and you want to search for the draw mask tool. Once you've got this, drag this onto your top clip that you want to create the mask on. And then let's get rid of that. So we're going to hit Command 5 again to get rid of that effects panel. And then we're going to come up here to the info window here. We're gonna to go to uh, our effects panel um, in the video, video inspector. And then we're gonna start drawing onto the clip where we want this to start. So this is the first clip here. And basically what you wanna do is you'll see you've got a little pen tool here and you're gonna create a mask around this guy's back. And you do this by making, making multiple control points. So click on to this and you'll see these little red dots appear. And what you wanna do, I'm gonna do this very roughly today, but you wanna spend as much time as you can getting a really nice shape around your object. Obviously, the more difficult the shape is, the longer this will take. We're just gonna do a quick one here today. And uh, to complete the control points, you just basically need to go back around to the top here and then add your final one. But what you'll see happened here is that our top clip has now disappeared and it's showing this bottom clip. So there's a few things that you need to do first when you start masking. And the first one you wanna do is you wanna go here to view and you wanna change this to original. And then you'll see our original clip uh, pops up here. Secondly, the what you wanna do is just make sure that you have keyframes clicked here so that these are gonna be recorded. So we're gonna click on uh, position, on rotation, then we're gonna go down to scale. And we're just gonna ensure all of these are ticked. And why is this important? Well, if you don't click these, what you'll find is once you've drawn all your points, the mask won't move with the subject in your video. But once these are ticked, this all looks good. We've got it set to original. And what we need to do now is we need to go through frame by frame, yes, frame by frame, and move this new mask we've created along with the subject. So I'm gonna do that now. And what you can do 
is a little quick tip is you can actually drag this entire thing over there we go and match it to his back now you'll find you'll need to draw out the shape here so this is obviously out of frame as we move on and as we go through you'll notice that probably the shape of the guy's back will change a little bit you can see it's happening here already so you, you're going to want to move these little control points just up a little bit just to make sure um, it's still in the correct shape of the guy's back now I'm going to do this quickly, I'm going to go through frame by frame just by moving the cursor along each frame, pulling this across and then doing my little fine adjustments. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you back here after I've completed that. Okay, so now I've created all of the control points here in Final Cut. So if we play through this footage, you can see that our mask is now following the guy's backpack as we go back and forward throughout the timeline here. I'm just hitting the uh, arrows left and right to scroll through just to make sure it looks like it's fitting. Um, as you can see here at the top there, there's a little bit of the bag showing through. So probably what I would just quickly do is I would just go back up to the start here and I would just move all these over just to get this looking absolutely perfect. And you can see that that's now moving a little bit better. This one needs to be moved up a tiny bit. There we go. And so what do you need to do now? Well, once we've got this here, you'll notice of course that the old back, uh, sorry, the, the first original background is still in the shot. So what you need to do is just change this view here to composite. And then you'll notice this is the wrong way around. So you want to hit the invert mask. And now you'll see as we scroll through the timeline, as we go past the guys back here, we now have a lovely shot of this uh, Netherlands lamppost coming through. Now you'll probably notice it does look a little bit on the sharp side. So there's some things you can do to improve that. What I'd recommend is just increasing the feather amount here. And that basically uh, sort of increases or decreases the feathering, the softness of the object you've just masked. So I'm just going to create a little feather there. And then you can do the fall off, which is kind of where the uh, kind of feathering effect starts or finishes. So I'm just going to pull that in a little bit there just to soften that up a little bit. And then as we play that through now, now you can see it probably looks a little sharp. So we're going to go in and add some speed ramping. First of all, what I would do is uh, use command and the equals or plus button or minus just to zoom in a little bit here. And then what we're going to do is add a little speed ramp to the start of this clip. Now you can do that by hitting shift and B. And then we, uh, as we've already cut this clip here, we can kind of speed up this. And I'm just going to do it by about 150%. Let's try it a little bit faster, maybe a 200%. And uh, we can kind of do that under here as well. So maybe if we, let's try speed ramp on the bottom clip here. And I'm just gonna move this clip just along to the point here where we start rotating around the uh, lamp. I'm just going to speed that up again. Let's see how that looks. So you can see it's already looking much better before and your transition is starting to come together nicely. But once you've added some sound effects, uh, this is going to look really good. So let's show you the final output. So that's how you mask in Final Cut Pro 10. It's a little tricky technique, but when you master it, it really can help make some of your shots and transitions look really cool. So let me know, is this the first time you've used masking or is it the first time you've heard about it? Let me know in the comment section below and I promise I do get back to every single comment. And if you enjoyed this video, we've got more Final Cut Pro tutorials coming up very, very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe, that like and that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.